Hi everyone. So in this video I'm going to be sculpting a sloth as you can see. And uh, so starting out I have my handy binder and I have just started using protector page protectors in this. So I'll start out I'll be sketching and I'll be on Google. I'll be using Google images and YouTube. I'll watch a lot of documentaries on the animals I'm going to carve. I also like to look up the skull with structure. And by doing so, you have a good idea of like your main framework that you need to be working around. And it lets you know if you have like, for example, sloths have longer arms than they do legs. So by looking at the skeleton, you know just about how much. And as I go, I usually start with the spine in like a line of action. And that way I kind of like have the gesture down. And then from there, I'll like, I'll look at joints so off there I'll start drawing the limbs and I kind of look like bone to bone or joint to joint and then that way it gives me a good idea and I can kind of start shaping around that and so that's how I start out with that and then yeah keeping these in page protectors really helps uh, so for today the sloth by doing that I uh, it protects her from all the bar oil, any snow or any like debris that's getting thrown at your drawings. You don't want to ruin them so you can use them later on. So that's my tip for that and kind of how I approach it. Uh, if you have any other methods you use or any comments, leave them below. Uh, and other than that, uh, I'll talk about like my process of actually carving it after the video. But for now, I'd like to give a big thanks to Kretz Lumber Company of Anago, Wisconsin. They helped me source all my wood pretty much. And without them, it'd be a lot more difficult for me to get the wood that I need for doing these sculptures. So thank you, Kretz, and uh, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, just got done carving the sloth. Uh, turned out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, started out with a Husky 372 for the blocking, as well as a 555. I used the 555 to skim the outside of the log. That way I get all the dirt off and I don't have to worry about dulling up my other saws. So it's kind of like a, the saw with the worst chain gets that job. Uh, from there I used the 372 to block it in and get it started <clears throat> and then I have two steel MS 180s uh, one with a Oregon Sculptor 14 inch dime tip and then the other with a Canon 8 inch dime tip that I used for the fur details but uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out sloths have really thin hair so I was trying to get that wispy look and then uh, this is as far as I can take it, uh, winter in Wisconsin, so I'll have to let it dry a bit, probably put it in the basement. And uh, 
maybe come back and do some really fine touch-up details. Uh, I'll probably take an airbrush, do the nose as well as the eyes, and they have kind of a dark area that comes all the way down. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, then I'll oil it up and it should be good to go. But as far as starting out, I like to do some sketching and I just kind of have a binder. I have page protectors that I can put my sketches in here. They stay safe and protected from all the bar oil. So that's something I started doing. I really like it. And uh, yeah, just by sketching. And then I look at skeletal structure as well as the animals I carve usually. And that really helps with form and knowing if one of their limbs has longer arms versus legs, such as a sloth or any other variable. And uh, yeah, so that's a quick run through of my process. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, enjoy the video.